don't care if it offends you anymore. You can't have my altar and you'll never kill my sparrow. Oh, my That's right. That's right. My God. Galatians 4.19 declares that if you travail in birth again till Christ be formed in you. Why? Why? Because every time you come to an altar, God deposits something in your soul. Yep. Joel 2 and 17 declares, and young men, this was for you again. I put this in here just for you three. Joel 2 and 17 says this, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, let them weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach that the heathen should not rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is the Lord? He gave a mandate, he said, just so that the heathen can't come in and take over. There's got to be a few young ministers around the tabernacle that does not mind going down to an altar and weeping their eyes out, saying, God, spare them. Right. Saying, God, touch them. Saying, God, I don't know what they're going through, and I don't know what they've done, but God, if you'll just have a little mercy this evening. God, if you'll just deposit some joy back into their life this evening. God, if you'll just touch them this evening. God, I'm asking right now, Lord, he was asking, it was sanctuary that had the desire to go to an altar and weep for the people. Come on, my God, my God, in Jesus' name. He was asking, where is the Abraham that doesn't mind crying out for Lot's sake? All right. He was asking, where is the Moses who doesn't mind crying out for the children of Israel? Amen. Even if they've fallen. Amen. Come on. Where is the intercessor of today? Where is the one who the one who will go a little further with him? You see, Scripture declares concerning Jesus that he went a little further and he fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But he used a powerful word right here. He said, Nevertheless, not as I will, but as I will. Because whenever you come to an altar, it diminishes your will and the will of God stands. All right. Yes, sir. And I'm closing right now. If you'll stand with me, musicians, if you'll come. My dear friends, I don't come to rant and rave. I don't come to really just jump all over you. That's not my intention tonight. But I want to tell somebody that while you're just simply weary, while you've reached a point. All right. I just weariness. Yeah. Please, please don't kill the sparrow. All right. While you've just reached a point where you're just simply tired, please remember that the little things of God are so important. To you. Right. Amen. While you've reached a place where you're just in your spirit, you're saying, I don't know. I just don't know. I just don't know. All right. While you've reached that place and you're looking at the crossroads and you're standing at the fork in the road and you're looking down both lanes and you're literally asking God where in the world have I gone yeah. and how did I get here right. while you're standing there listening to the voices in your head telling you go this way and go that way while you're standing there hearing the influential voices of the world trying to pull you to and fro this that and the other way while you're doing all of that can i ask you to remember the voice of a man who cried out in psalms 84 and declared yay the sparrow still finds a place at an altar right 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 because the sparrow is a little thing. Yes. A little thing of God. The little thing of God that matters. Matters so much. In the word of God, the locust is used as a very, very real picture for the end. Picture of destruction. Picture of devastation. And ultimately, there was only one anecdote you to direct your prayer back to the place of the altar. But see, I, I read in 2 Chronicles 7 and 12, and this is a very familiar chapter to many of us. 
But the Bible says, and, and the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I've heard thy prayer and I've chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. Uh, and he says, if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. Or, or if I command the locusts to devour the land. Or if I send a pestilence among my people. But he says in verse 14, and we love this verse so much, but tie it in tonight. He said, but if my people, which are called by my name, would just humble themselves themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked way. He was building a blueprint. He was trying to tell them the way you get rid of the locust is you go back and build the altar. Come on, my God, my God, my God. Listen, if you're a guest tonight, and you may think, oh, that's, that's a little overdone up there, preacher. That's a little overdone. That's a little too fervent for me. You're getting a little too excited. Let me tell you right now, it should terrify your heart to ever walk into a sanctuary and hear nobody crying at an altar. All right. It should terrify your soul to walk into a church house and hear nobody crying at an altar. Nobody praying for you. Nobody crying about your soul. It should terrify you. Yes, it should. Everybody bow your head. Bow your head right now. Eyes closed, head bowed. Matthew 10 and 28 says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. But he didn't stop there with this admonishment, friend. Please notice the next few verses. He says in 29, Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall to the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are more valuable than many sparrows. You're more valuable. Whosoever therefore shall confess me above men, him I will confess before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. And he that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loses his life for my sake shall find it Christ. And this admonishment right here, he said, I notice little things. I notice little things like spare sold for farthings and yet you are more valuable than those things. He said, I notice those who are not ashamed and I notice those who have taken up a cross and I notice those who follow and he said, but I notice altars. Small things make a big difference. Don't kill the sparrow out of despair. Don't kill the sparrow out of discouragement. Don't kill the sparrow out of just being tired. Don't kill the sparrow. Don't kill the sparrow. Small things make such a huge difference. And it's things like the sparrow that keep the devourer away. I'm going to give you a chance right now to reach out to God and pull down every bit of glory that he's got prepared for you right now.